Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to the final episode of Legit Flip for our E39 BMW that I paid only $900 for. In this video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of everything, but like all of the videos in this series, the common theme will be DIY repairs on a budget that all of you guys can do at home. And even if you're never gonna do any repairs on your cars at all, you can still follow along and have a good time because I'm gonna be tallying up everything we put into this car in this video and in the prior videos will come up with a total amount and then i'm listing the e39 on modsandmiles.com with a no reserve auction so you guys can go and follow along the fun and see what i end up selling this thing for so i'll leave a link for that down below but with that we got to get right to work all right so we're going to get to some painting first so that everything dries in time for the other repairs but as you can see we're missing a tow hook cover a BMW hood emblem, and this, which is about to snap off right now, it's broken. So when I first bought the car, at first glance, I was like, ah, oh, I need a whole new front bumper. And I'm like, wait a minute, you can buy these on eBay for $20. So that's what I did. All right, so here is our new piece from eBay. This was $20 shipped. And right now I'm just using a green Scotch-Brite pad to scuff the surface. All right, next up, we're gonna be using Eastwood's pre-painting prep. Try to say that fast three times in a row, pre-painting, pre -painting, but you can't do it. Anyway, so this is gonna release the mold agents uh, from this piece of plastic here. And we're gonna just spray it on like so. And I'm gonna give it a wipe. Then I just like to spray it down again and let it air dry. And this can cost $15. Oh, and our high-tech paint booth was free 99. With the bumper trim piece dry, our next step is an adhesion promoter. So this costs about $15 and it's very important when you're painting plastics because this is going to help melt the color into the plastic. So if you've ever seen plastic bumpers that were painted improperly and they're peeling prematurely, it's probably because they haven't used this. So we're doing a medium coat of the adhesion promoter. Right on, you don't have to go too crazy. A little bit goes a long way, but as soon as you see it turn glossy, you know you're good. And then have your paint already shook up, ready to go. And we are gonna spray our Oxford Green factory BMW color right onto the trim piece. And we're gonna do a few light coats. So we're gonna wait about a minute for this to flash off and then we'll do a second coat and possibly a third coat. But this is a really nice DIY option this is an aerosol can of Oxford green paint that I picked up off of Amazon for $35. I'll leave a link down below, but you let them know your paint code and they will mix you up your exact car color and right in a can. And then this little adapter just makes it easy so your finger isn't getting in the way of the stream of the paint and causing it to drip down. So this is a very nice DIY option. And with that, it's been about a minute. Let's do another light coat. And it's important not to go too heavy so you don't get any runs. So you wanna continually shake the can in between coats. And now we're gonna do our third and probably final coat and I'll lay it on a little thicker. It definitely looks like three coats is enough. This came out very nice and even. So I'm gonna let it dry for about 15, 20 minutes and then we'll do our clear coat. With the base coat dry, it is time for a clear coat and we're gonna do two wet coats of clear with about one minute of dry time in between. And here is our second coat of clear. And this piece is looking so good already. And that's it, we're done. And take a look at these DIY rattle can results. So we have the factory Oxford green metallic that laid down perfectly, the clear coat, the paint, nothing has any runs. This is excellent. All right, so this is fully cured. Let's go ahead and snap it back on. All right, cool. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after, and obviously we still have to buff out the entire car. But let's kind of finish up this front end real quick. All right, with that, let's kind of complete the look of the front with a new BMW logo. And these usually just pry out pretty easily with a plastic wedge, like so. There we go. View. Make this a little clean. And then we just have to push in our new BMW emblem. That's about it, it's a press fit. 
Bam. I picked up an Oxford green front tow hook cover for 10 bucks on eBay. And the BMW hood emblem was about 10 bucks also from Amazon. So there's that. Next up, we're gonna replace this totally mangled and cracked up bumper, which is ready to come apart with this, a used Oxford green bumper that I found from a local part out for $80. Now at first glance, this bumper looks to be in excellent condition, but let's go wash it off and see what the paint looks like. All right, let's see what we got here. This paint looks to be in pretty good condition so far. Uh, except for this right here. Not that the rest of the car is in mint condition or anything, but this is a little disappointing. Just not nearly as disappointing as my latest fishing trip. Alex, have you caught anything all day? Nothing. I'm done, man. It's time for Fishing Clash. Fishing Clash is a mobile fishing game available for download on Android and iOS, and you can download the game by clicking my link below or scanning the QR code on screen. This game has some of the most realistic graphics you've ever seen on a mobile device, and you can travel all around the world from the comfort of your own home, fishing from shore or off a boat. All right, we're about to cast out in Florida, and on the 4th of July, they're having a special event dedicated to our Independence Day. And you can even catch a bottle with one of our founding father's signatures. Come on, baby. No, oh, you're not getting away. You're not getting away. If I can't catch anything on shore, definitely. Oh, yes. I got the shark. Upgrade your rod and lures to compete with other fishers and take part in weekly competitions to develop your mobile fishing skills even further. Make your own clan and play against friends, family, or other players from all over. Best part is if you follow these three simple steps and enter gift code LSC, you're gonna get a three star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power ups, and a 30 weight power up for free. And that's a $20 value. So a big thanks to Fishing Clash for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, click on the link down below or scan the QR code on screen to start fishing today. Good luck. All right, well, the good news with this bumper is that we have extra Oxford green paint and clear. So this will give me an opportunity to show you guys a spot repair on a bumper, which is a really common repair procedure at body shops when they don't wanna spend the money to repaint everything. So let's get to sanding. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here is a spot repair. And we're just gonna go ahead and scuff this area up with an aggressive Scotch-Brite pad. Now the rest of this bumper isn't absolutely perfect, but we're not gonna go down the rabbit hole of painting everything because as you guys are gonna see at the end, the car is gonna be really nice but it won't be perfect. And we're on a super crazy low budget here. You guys who have been following around know that this series isn't like the other passion projects of mine where we strip everything down. We put thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into it to make it perfect. This is legit flip. We're here to make money, people. All right, so I thought a lot of this was gonna go away with the scotch Bright, but if you still have little cracks in the paint, you're gonna have to get some sandpaper out and get those out. You want those to disappear. So if you have to sand it down to the primer or even the bare plastic of the bumper, that's fine. So right now we're removing the clear coat. And a lot of times these cracks are just in the clear. All right, now we're getting right into the base coat. You can see it's starting to get a little bit darker. And we're getting past the base coat now. And we're getting rid of these cracks right in front of your eyes. And this is 400 grit sandpaper. Some people would go more aggressive, but I don't really see the need. And I saw there was a little imperfection here, so let's just hit that while, while we're in there. Since we're not painting the entire bumper, now we have to mask it off, and we're gonna use a paper trick that Peter just taught me. So basically, we're gonna take our piece of paper and we're going to attach it with our tape like so. And then, so we don't have a harsh line, we're gonna fold this piece of paper back like so. And we're going to retape it. So we're going to be blending into this area here. So instead of having a hard tape line somewhere, which you'd probably notice, we're going to be able to feather it in gently so you won't see a thing. Okay, so this is our prep setup. We are ready to spray. Just like before, we're going to hit it with the prep spray first. I'm going to wipe the entire area because we're going to be blending into here. And if you have one of these cool blue blowers, you can speed this up. At this point, we're ready for our base coat and we're not gonna be using the adhesion promoter because there isn't any bare plastic. We haven't sanded down all the way to the bare plastic. We've sanded down to the primer coat 
and the paint on this bumper is sticking really well. It could be mostly factory. So the adhesion promoter for the plastic has already been applied. And because of that, we don't need to do it again. So again, we're gonna do multiple light coats and I'm gonna concentrate the spray right in the middle here where our damaged area is. And I'm gonna kind of fan it out into these areas here. All right, so that's what it looks like after coat number one. Now we'll wait about a minute and do it again. All right, here is coat number two. And I gotta say, using a rattle can with this gun attachment is really nice. It's almost like spraying with a real gun. Almost, don't crucify me, professional painters. I know it's not just like spraying with a real gun. All right, so now we're on to our third coat of the base. And we're gonna lay this down a little bit thicker. So this is a wet coat. And this is where the color is really gonna start filling in and blending. And we're able to start to see that blemish just magically disappear. And here's gonna be our final coat. Another wet coat just concentrated right in the trouble spot. All right, I think that is it for the base coat. Okay, we've let the base coat dry. So now it is time for some clear coat. And I'm gonna be kind of fanning this into these areas here so I won't go directly into them because we're just doing a blend job. We'll concentrate most of the clear in the damaged area. All right, and after about a minute, we're gonna lay down our wet coat for the clear. All right, and now we're just gonna do one last wet coat. So two total wet coats here. And there you have it. We're done with our spot repair on the rear bumper. So at this point, we're just gonna let it dry and we still have to buff the entire bumper so everything matches properly. Um, but I think overall, we're doing a rattle can job with some leftover paint, and this isn't too bad. Okay, so while our rear bumper is drying, we want to take care of this. The paint from this wheel is peeling away to nothing. So I don't know if this was a previous repair job or what. Kind of looks that way. But we're going to fix it for about $25. Oh, this guy stuck on. I've got to do the old mule kick. There we go. This thing's got really nice tires on it too. Now, if you guys were around for the SVT lightning frame blasting video, then you know what we're about to do. We have our adapter to suck in our sand and it's gonna all be blasted with our pressure washer. So we're gonna be blasting sand and water onto the wheel and this is gonna remove the coating. All right, so first off, we're gonna hit it with water. I think this is gonna remove a lot of this flaky paint. And yeah, it looks like we can get right underneath this and literally just peel it off. Yeah, this had to have been a repaint. And they probably didn't use an adhesion promoter like we're gonna use. Most of the paint came off with just pressure washing with a red tip nozzle, so the most aggressive nozzle that we have. But we're still gonna use a little bit of sand right now. All right, so this is what our wheel looks like prepped and ready to go. So we already sprayed it down with the paint prep and it is degreased and ready to go. So for the wheel, we're still gonna use an adhesion promoter, but this is a different product that works with painted surfaces as well because our wheel still has the factory gray primer, which we wanna leave because that's a good base for our color. And this is gonna make it adhere even better. And the process here is a little bit different. We're gonna do a light coat we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes and then we're gonna do a wet coat. So this is the first coat, that's it. So after the five minutes, we're now gonna do a wet coat. And after the wet coat, we're gonna let this dry for 15 minutes before we start spraying our base coat. Next up, we're gonna be using a VHT wheel paint. So we did spray this on a piece of paper and match it up to the other wheel. So this one isn't specifically formulated for the BMW wheels, but a lot of these painted aluminum wheels are the same shade. Um, and this looks pretty good. So if you haven't sandblasted your wheel, you're just gonna wanna scuff it up with like some 320 grit sandpaper and then clean it. But we're ready to go at this point. And this is gonna be just like the painting process where we're gonna do 
a couple of light coats, and then we'll lay on a couple medium or wet coats as well to really give it that color. At this point, I've already done the second light coat, so now we're gonna put on our wet coat. And the wheel's already starting to look 10 times better than it did before. Now, if you're dealing with a wheel with a lot of spokes like this, just make sure you're getting each side. So this is gonna take a little bit more time to paint than a wheel with a flat face. But in reality, after the wheel is prepped, this is probably about an hour job each wheel. And if you're doing all the wheels, you can kind of bounce around back and forth and do this in short order. I've put the wheel outside in the sun. It's about 90 degrees out, and this should definitely help with the curing process. Aside from a license plate light, the only real error code we have on the cluster is an airbag light. And we're getting codes for basically everything, but the important one is internal control unit fault. And these SRS control units do go bad quite often on these. So I picked up a really nice condition, used one for 30 bucks from a local part out. The SRS control unit is located right under the center console on the E39. And I started taking the entire thing out. And then I realized that all I needed to do was take that lid off, remove a couple of screws here, and then you can prop this up with a block of wood and get to the control unit like that. And I don't have a block of wood, so I'm using an old faulty control unit from my Alpina BMW. So if we just pull up on here, we can get to the connector. So right now I just wanna plug in our new used one and see if it works. Okay, so never mind. I had to remove the 10 millimeter bolts holding this guy in anyway, just to get the connector loose like that. So luckily it's really easy to get to all these nuts. And then we can just pull the module out like that. And I wonder if something was spilled on this guy. Pins look good. All right, so with the new module in, we are gonna have to code this. And there we go. We are coding our new used SRS control unit. All right, so coding is complete for our new unit. After the coding, I cleared out all of the codes. Nothing came back, so let's fire this thing up. And the light is gone, sweet. Right, we're gonna remove this trim off the rear bumper because we're swapping this over. Let's do it while it's holding itself to the car. And this molding goes all the way around. And this is a facelift car. On the earlier ones, this was just black. All right, so there's a total of six nuts that hold this bumper cover on, and then it just kind of slides back that. Okay. It's always nice to see what lies beneath a bumper cover, and this looks to have never been touched before. Uh, I don't suspect any major accidents with this car, but now we can see the very minor damage that occurred behind the portion of the bumper that has the cracks. So this isn't going to affect really much of anything. The bumper will still line up on the car perfectly fine. So you can see here that none of this structure has been affected at all. This is all original. So either they backed into something at low speeds or someone just rear-ended them slightly and this is what it did. All right, so at this point we're gonna replace this rear tail light. So it's just held in by a few eight millimeter nuts that I've already removed and then you can kind of just push it out. And there you have it. So this is cracked possibly in that accident. It is on the same side. All right, so we'll just clean up some of these leaves. You definitely tell this car has not been taken apart recently, that's for sure. And this is all really nice to see. We're looking at the bones of this E39. And if this was crunched up in the back, even if it was fixed at a good body shop, you can tell if it's not factory, all of this stuff could have been bent back unless they replaced the entire rear section of the vehicle but I really don't think so. This is a clean title, clean Carfax type of deal. All right, and then I picked up a nice used taillight for $80 from a local part out. Let's install that. It's pretty easy. Now we're just gonna plug it in and zip in four eight mils and you're done. All right, so we've just swapped over everything to our new used bumper that is now fully dry. So now we just have to reinstall it and I really like this bumper crash bar because it gives you these gigantic dowel pins essentially to line you up. All right, we'll slide our little mold pieces in. Like I said, this is very, very satisfying. And I'm here to satisfy, so let's give you 
a few more nice positive clicky clicks. Oh yeah. Okay. Click. There we go. And we still have touch up paint work to do, but here is our used rear bumper installed. All right, you guys have seen me wash cars a million times, so I'm just gonna show you the satisfying parts. And this is where everything went. I guess I'm washing my walls today too. Don't park your car under trees. This is a pain in the butt right now. Yeah, you might get a tiny bit of water in the trunk. It's no big deal. It's way, way better than trying to clean this all by hand. It's all about the aim. Say hello to my little friend. You got this, Peter. You got this. You got this. You want a piece of meat? <laughs> I mean, it is, it is quite dirty. It's probably going to beat us up during the buffing process. But at this point, we're just going to wash the car, and then we're going to use a clay mitt on it as well. And that looks just like this, so I'll follow Peter around. And this feels like sandpaper right now. You can literally hear this. This is so bad. So this is doing what a clay bar does, and it's removing all the contaminants in the clear coat so that we're not just grinding them in there when we go to buff the car out. And you wanna rinse this every once in a while because of everything that it's removing and just keep it nice and lubricated. All right, so I've used the clay mitt everywhere. Now it's time to rinse the car off. You guys know what that's about. We're gonna spray water on the car, that's it. Let's get right into buffing out some of these horrid scratches and probably filling some in as well. All right, so I just moved the E39 over here after the wash so we can start buffing it, and I'm starting to smell a little bit of coolant. Actually, kind of a, a strong smell of coolant. So I just started looking around. I don't really see anything obvious from up here, and I haven't seen any puddles on the ground. This thing has been sitting around for quite some time, but, um, oh, wait a minute. Is that water from the wash? Nope, nope, nope. That is yellowish green. That is definitely coolant. Wow. That is a lot of coolant. What is going on? All right, so it's way further back. It doesn't look like anything's leaking from the engine. It's gonna say this now, typical old BMW, leaking coolant, what's new? Okay, um, from what I can tell at first glance, the transmission, the manual transmission is leaking coolant. <laughs> that cannot be it. Where is this coming from? It's like it's coming from above the transmission and leaking down. That's actually really good news because what is above the transmission that carries coolant? We have heater hoses. So here's one of them, here's another one. So let's just start feeling around these hoses. I haven't had the engine running very long, so it's not that hot. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay, there is a gigantic rip in this hose. Hang on, let's take it off. It's rare you get this lucky with an old BMW, but we're gonna get away with a hose or a hose repair if they don't have it in stock. There we go. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, nice. Very nice. This is why it's always a good idea to replace older hoses, even if they look okay. Especially if you start seeing them ballooning like this, they're about to go. There we go. Okay, there you have it. Just trying to buff you out, BMW. Why you gotta do this to me? All right guys, so it was crazy. I actually found this hose at a little auto parts store. No one had it in stock. They had one just laying there. It's probably been there for like 10 years but only 20 bucks and we'll have this hose fixed. And then I have the other hose on order because we should probably just do both of them at the same time, but it's a three to five day wait. So anyway, let me get this hose on. We'll fill it up and we should be good. All right, guys, we are almost done. Peter and I are gonna buff out the entire E39 because Peter's buff. 
And uh, I'm only gonna show you the satisfying fun stuff like this tape line because this thing is scratched up all over the place and it's gonna make such a big difference. We're gonna do a one stage on the E39. So we're using a coarse wool pad from Rupez and their coarse compound, which surprisingly gives you a very, very nice one step if you're not looking to spend your entire life buffing your car. All right, so we went from this all the way to this. Wow, this car is gonna clean up so nice and it's basically a different color. And speaking of color, I really like this Oxford green metallic. Peter, your next challenge, if you so choose to accept it, is this, these horrible scratches in the hood. How do you think you're gonna do? Kill it. All right, just calm, calm down, dude. All right, Peter, let's see what you can do, buddy. All right, and three minutes later, what do we have, Peter? How'd you do? Whoa. Whoa, look at that. Dude, that is amazing. All right, we just finished buffing that entire area, so it had gigantic scratches right here, and they're mostly all gone. Some of them are a little bit deeper and still there, but again, look at what we started with. Now, something else that's making this E39 look a lot worse than it is are just little scuffs like this. And just like that, it's gone. The trunklet is a perfect example of what this E39 looks like as a whole. It's just all scratched up to almost every degree. But I think like 80% of these will be able to get out. And the other 20% are scratches like this one. It was keyed almost all the way down the quarter and someone tried to fix it before. Um, but we're gonna do a little bit of touch up paint work here and almost make this fully disappear. Let's say goodbye to all of these trunk scratches or most of them, not all of them. It's not gonna be perfect. All right, so on the trunk lid, we went from this to this. All right, guys, it's time to tackle this key scratch on the quarter panel. And if you saw the Alpina video where we fixed all the scratches on that car, you know what we're doing next. We're using 1000 grit sandpaper and wet sanding, and this is gonna reduce the scratch in itself. And the Alpina was a totaled out vandalism car and it was quoted for needing an entire new paint job. And we got it about 85% better with the method I'm gonna do right now. And as you can see, we've already reduced this scratch quite a bit. So I put a little bit of the spray paint right inside of this cap and we have one of these little dabbers. I go like that. And we're just gonna blend this paint in. Yeah, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need to go crazy. You don't want runs. We're gonna wet sand this again anyway, but you really just need a little bit of color. And don't worry about being perfect in this step because we will be wet sanding and blending this away. All right, so our touch up paint has dried. So now we're just gonna go ahead and wet everything and do a little bit of light wet sanding. Basically, we're just knocking down any high spots, but we're not applying really any pressure at all. This is what we're left with after our little touch up work. And now we're just gonna use a little bit of automotive clear on top. You can get this at any auto parts store for a few bucks. And we'll just go right back over the scratch like this. Okay, so now we have our clear coat on over the scratch. So we're gonna go ahead once again and just a little light wet sanding with our 1000 grit sandpaper. All right, then we'll wipe it down and we are ready to buff. All right, so the quarter panel scratch went from looking like this to looking like this. So you can see there is definitely still some scratch there, but it is reduced quite a bit. This was a deep one. And just like the rest of the car, we're making it better, not perfect. And this is, this is pretty decent. Just got done buffing half of the roof. So here is our before faded and swirled paint all the way to this. It's like glass. Check out these nasty rocker panel scratches. 
So here is the before. And after some buffing, here is our after. So here's one I haven't fixed yet. And from far away, you can see that. And from far away, you can't see the scratches we just fixed. Now there is a little bit of rust here at the bottom of the door. And I'll tell you what we're doing about that in a few minutes during the grand reveal of our completed E39. We're almost there. All right, guys, we're done buffing out the entire car. I'm gonna give it a final wash before we do our final reveal. But this just came in and it was 40 bucks from the BMW dealer. It's some weird size. I couldn't find it on Amazon or on eBay. So this is like the most expensive individual part, I think, in this video. Well, maybe not. The tail light was more than that. And so was the bumper. That was 80. All right, so here's our clean title manual transmission E39. But before I show you the car up close, let's recap this project and tally up the grand total. When the car arrived to my house for $900, including the tow, since I bought it from a tow company, it was misfiring and we got lucky and it just needed an ignition coil. The shifter was also difficult to move and lubricating the linkage fixed that. And in the next video, we did some detail work, including detailing this nasty engine and engine compartment. So it went from looking like this to looking like this. And the next video was a mechanical repair extravaganza where I made 15 separate repairs in one video. So I fixed the cooling system with a new fan clutch, an engine oil leak with new valve cover gaskets. We replaced some really worn out control arms, did a complete brake job, including pads and rotors. I replaced the cabin filters and oil level sensor. What else? I replaced the spark plugs and the fuel filter and a bunch of other parts. I believe it was 67 individual individual parts that were replaced in that one hour long video. So definitely check it out if you're into car repair videos. I'll leave it linked down below. After that, I embarked on an interior restoration on a super low budget. So for about $100, we fixed these nasty leather seats. Someone had literally painted these with wall paint, like for a house from Home Depot. So I stripped them all, made a few leather repairs and dyed all of the leather, the factory BMW beige color and they turned out amazing. I honestly could not believe my eyes after this was all done and said, and I even needed to look at the before and after pictures just to see how far we had come. So in the next video, we fixed up the interior trim, dyed the carpets and seat belts, and put it all back together. And now we have this. The interior of the E39 is a wonderful place to be. And this car just drives so well, straight as an arrow. The transmission is buttery smooth. The engine runs so well. It's a driver's car. And so the grand total in the last video was $2,393. That includes everything you guys saw in the recap. It's every penny that I have into this car, including gas. And after this video, we added $386 more for a grand final legit flip total of $2,779. Now I'll be listing the car shortly at modsandmiles.com. So I'll leave a link down below. It's not live just yet while I'm filming this, but it will be very soon. And if you guys wanna go ahead and register as a buyer, you can do that so you're ready to go. And there's a bunch of other cool cars on the site as well. But I am hoping, I think that this car could pull in somewhere in like the six to $9,000 range, something like that. I think I can at the very least double my money with this E39. And even if you're not gonna bid on the car, definitely follow along during the auction so you can see what it finally sells for and we can figure out what I made. All right guys, so here's a little bit of what the E39 looked like before the exterior was in very poor condition but nothing too far gone. It didn't have any major dents or paint issues. Everything was generally intact. And when this car first arrived to my house, I knew that it was gonna be an excellent candidate for just kind of a mini refresh to make this a very respectable daily driver. So I think it'd be cool if the person that bought this was big into E39s and maybe had an E39 M5 garage queen that they never drive, but they just simply want to be in an E39 at all times, this would make the best daily driver for that guy or anyone that's really into cool cars. So that's a little of what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. So really it just needed the logo, the tow hook cover and this bumper trim. Earlier in the series, we buffed out the headlights and this is what we're left with. It looks sweet. As you saw, Peter and I also buffed out the entire E39 and we went around 
and did a little bit of touch-up work. You can see our little spots right there, but obviously much cheaper than repainting the front end of the car for some rock chips, especially on a 119,000 mile car that just simply isn't perfect. Now I'll admit something I'm not super happy with is the match of the wheels. So we did a good job on this. I think it looks great, but it looks a little too nice now because the rest of the wheels have not been freshly painted and I have cleaned these many times. They just have a lot of caked on brake dust and whatnot. So it doesn't really match. You can obviously tell that we did something with that one. But again, that cost us like 20 bucks and it's much better than a wheel that's peeling apart. Now we were able to get about 80% of the scratches off of the BMW. So the paint is looking really, really nice. We've restored the clear coat. We have a badge in the back and we no longer have a cracked bumper. Now this bumper is not perfect. You can still see some scratches up close, mostly in the molding that we swapped over from the old bumper. But other than that, we did a pretty decent job at matching the paint. This was the area that we repainted right there. And it's definitely not perfect, but realistically, no one would be able to tell, especially from a few feet away. Or if you saw this video and just put your face right up into it, then, then maybe you can tell that we did something. But overall, I think we have a really solid E39. All the panels are straight. I don't believe this has been in any kind of major accident. I was looking inside of here, inside of the trunk panels, and everything looks factory. All the quarter panels, the doors are straight, the fenders are in good condition. Maybe it could use a little bit of paintless dent removal, but the one area of this car that's just gonna bring it down a notch from the really nice E39s is that it does have a little bit of rust. Now, this is something that I would not be able to fix in-house. I would sublet this out to a body shop. And since we're doing legit flip here, obviously the idea is just to make money on the car and not restore it for the next guy. And so here it is. There's a little at the bottom of the door, not really a big deal at all. This is a super common spot on these cars by the gas cap, so there's some bubbling there. And then just a little bit more here. Now I could have gone to Mako or somewhere cheap and had them sand that down, fill it, and paint it for maybe four or 500 bucks. But honestly, I think that would be the dishonest route to go. I'd rather accept a little bit less for the car, let them see the rust, and let the next owner decide how they want to fix it because there are a few different ways you can do this and some ways are cheap and some ways are kind of expensive. So it's really going to depend on what this car means to the next owner, but it's mechanically sound. It looks amazing. I have less than $3,000 into it. There's still meat on the bone for me to make a profit as well. And I had a blast doing it. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this entire legit flip series on what I believe to be the coolest E39 BMW outside of the M5. And if you did enjoy it, give this video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, download Fishing Clash, the link will be down below, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.